Vertical gene transfer is the passing on of genes by reproduction. Horizontal gene transfer is uh, a process by which certain species of bacteria are capable of uh, expelling uh, strands of DNA from their, you might call it a body, from their cell wall, and uh, to share with other bacteria to help them fight uh, things that, uh, for which they need immunities. It's a pretty amazing process. Yep, that's right. Horizontal gene transfer in most cases concerns itself with bacteria and perhaps in a few cases with eukaryotic cells. So extremely rarely in fish, insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. Evolutionists claim that horizontal gene transfer is a product of evolution. In truth, it is an example of intelligent design in action. If evolution were true, bacteria would be greedy with their cherished DNA because the ability to share genetic material with others and their species does not promote the well-being of the individual. No, 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 you really do not understand. Evolution has no mind, no end game, no target, and no reason to be greedy. And how many times do you have to be told that evolution is about populations and not individuals? It can't be considered some form of altruism because bacteria have no intellect. Hurrah! Correct! Bacteria do not have intellect, exactly as evolution predicts. This makes it clear that organisms which perform uh, such feats by perform such feats by design, not by intellect or unguided force. Duh, didn't we agree just a few seconds ago that bacteria don't have intellect? I don't know about random mutations, but what you spoke surely smacks of randomness. And that's some pretty bad design. Horizontal gene transfer providing totally random acts, with some becoming successful and others not surviving. So great of the designer to allow different strains of bacteria to mutate by a horizontal gene transfer, thwarting the altruistic action of man's attempts to conquer horrific bacterial diseases donated by this kindly creator. Evolution certainly can't provide a scenario by which evolution could envision the need for a process of spitting genes out of the body when genes supposedly originated, originally developed inside the body of the first single cell organism and should therefore be highly guarded and cherished by both the organism and evolution. Here we go again. Evolution does not envisage anything, nor does it cherish. How does it follow that a particular stretch of DNA that has been naturally selected is somehow immune from horizontal gene transfer? That's like saying that a car that has been designed to run on pneumatic tires cannot get exchange of air via a puncture. Horizontal gene transfer then is obviously a feature of design by a higher mind for the purpose of ensuring that the species would remain, remain fit in the face of the lack of an ability of evolution to provide a scenario by which bacteria could care one bit if there were any others like themselves. Horizontal gene transfer is not such a good thing for evolution, it is merely a part of it. It doesn't provide such a mechanism for humans as we reproduce by sexual means. and. Our cell structure does not open itself to horizontal gene transfer. This is more of a conundrum for the myth of designerism. No designer worth its salt would complicate matters by having more than one method of gene transfer. Sorry, but given the evidence, evolution is the only answer. See, uh, evolution is illogical because if evolution were true, it would develop one organism would have developed. It would not have reproduced. It wouldn't. It, it would have just. So, if horizontal gene transfer is such a wonderful design, why are most transfers vertical? It's been one organism, you see. There's, it, creating more of its kind is contrary to the evolution theory because it's creating competition for oneself. It just doesn't sink in, does it? Evolution has no plan, and it is mutations acted on by natural selection that actually cause evolution. The very fact that there are mutations during the copying process completely dispels the myth of intelligencism. And of course, at gene level, it's not creating competition for itself. It's merely ensuring its survival into the future. Okay. Ah, don't mention it. Um, horizontal gene transfer is an example of how evolutionists always attempt to take make non-cognitive processes seem like thinking ones to make evolution seem plausible. One more time now, evolution has no thoughts and no intents. Why can't you understand even such a basic point? Cells possess many properties which defy evolutionism. The human white blood cell is a beautiful example of intelligent design. What follows now is the classic illogical statement of 
It is complicated, therefore God done it. They're part of the innate and adaptive immune systems. They're produced by bone marrow and become either monocytes or phagocytes. As monocytes, they are free-roaming cells which clean up cell debris. You mean the debris that this wonderful designer foolishly placed there? I wouldn't have this designer to design a teapot. As, and are hunters for the immune system. They leave a vein by passing through its wall and through tissues to race to the site of infection by following chemical signals. Once they reach their destiny, they undergo a series of structural and chemical changes to become monocytes. They then seek out the chemical trail of bacteria until they overcome them and engulf them. Evolution cannot explain such a system by which a single cell can follow chemical signals through the tissue of its host to serve such a function. That smacks of evolution 100%. Natural selection ensures that only the best scenarios survive, whereas countless others will have failed. Much less the ability to change morphologically on the fly. Morphology? What the hell does that have to do with horizontal gene transfer at this level? I really must do a video one day questioning your limited knowledge on what morphology actually is. And perhaps you could do one on the morphology of bacteria. While evolution theory itself has no evidence of morphological change, that more, no more evidence of morphological change can be observed by random mutation or has ever occurred to an entire organism as a whole. Morphology has been observed in the so-called microevolution of the domestic dog. Morphological changes are clearly demonstrated in the fossil record. Yeah, that's right, the fossil record, the topic that you consistently get pawned on. May I apologize on behalf of all evolutionists that none of us were around to witness each fossil be informed. The program morphological and biochemical changes of a single cell clearly outperforms evolution theory so much that such changes can take place in minutes, whereby evolution theory, evolution has been unable to create something like this in over one billion years. Oh, you are confused. The process of evolution does indeed take millions of years, including the process that you have just described. That doesn't mean that the results of evolution take a long time. It's akin to saying that childbirth should take millions of years just because we evolved over millions of years. Besides, what rule in evolution states that all organisms evolve over a long time? Bacteria obviously evolve many times in a human lifespan, so what? Design is clearly intelligent. Uh Design is clearly intelligent and capable, whereas evolution is clearly mindless and inept. Evolution mindless? Funny how you suggested the opposite earlier in the video. Neff, if I were you, I'd dispense with reading from an uninformed website and delete this video. It saves all round embarrassment. Yet white blood cells need no trials and no errors to do what evolution cannot. Simply saying what evolution cannot do is of no scientific value. As of yet, you have proved nothing. That's nothing either against evolution nor for designism. Mere words are empty without the backup. Moreover, pus is a large number of white blood cells which race to the site of infection, fight the infection, and die. And salmon die once they have spawned. What's your point? Evolutionists would have us believe that this ingenious, altruistic, soldier-like behavior was somehow written in the genetic uh, instructions into the DNA by evolution so that it can be expressed by white blood cells specifically. Yep, that's totally consistent with an evolutionary explanation, but yet again a massive knockout blow for a designer. Such functions look like just another patch-up to correct a flawed design by this imaginary designer of yours. Now, if an armchair scientist such as yourself can believe what you like, me, I'll stick to the professionals, i.e. the guys that are actually doing the work. The very idea that such a process could, could exist is illust illustrates the absurdity of evolutionism. Yet white blood cells have no intellect as we consider intellect to be the function of a brain. Judging by the site from which you are reading, it seems like white blood cells are not the only things that don't have intellect. Clearly evolution cannot be the designer of such cells or any cell. That's right, Neffy boy. Evolution is not a designer. It's not a god. That is why we don't worship it. That's why it is not a religion. It is merely a process. Nor could horizontal gene transfer be something created by evolution. Such feats are obvious examples of intelligent design. And 1 plus 2 equals 6,000. Okay.